This is my primary carp rig. This is a rig that I use 99% of the time when I'm carp fishing, and I refer to it as my 99% carp rig. I made a couple of small changes to this rig uh, for 2023, and I've been using this uh, rig for a, a few months now and uh, with good success, so I thought I'd just make an updated video. First thing I'm going to do is just uh, explain just the general uh, concept of what this rig is and how it works and uh, just let you know the various components that uh, make up the rig. And then after that I'm going to go back and I'm going to spend a minute or two on each individual component of the rig and provide a little bit more explanation as to why I use what I use and why it's set up the way it is. And then after that I'm going to do a step by step. Uh, where I'm just going to start from scratch and build this rig from scratch. I'm going to do it step by step uh, to, to show you exactly how I put this together from scratch. And in case you're wondering, there are links to all of these components in this rig in the description below. So this rig is what's called a bolt rig. And the way it works is there's a bait on here, on the hair rigged hook here. And when a fish picks up this bait and the hook uh, grabs a hold of their lip, the weight of this sinker pulls on the hook and sets the hook in their mouth. The hook gets set by the weight of the sinker. It does not require the, the fisherman or fisherwoman to set the hook at all. Just the weight of the sinker sets the hook. And the sinker is held in place by a, a bobber stop and a bead here and it's not but it's not completely fixed it's just uh, partially fixed because with with a good amount of force it can slide up the line and that's important I'll, I'll talk about that more a little bit later but the bottom line is it's a bolt rig and it's called that because when the when the fish uh, feels the hook prick their their mouth they bolt they take off pointing and that the weight of that sinker drives that hook into their lip and you've got a fish on the line. Now there are many ways that you could set up a bolt rig like this with various options, but uh, this is how I like to do it. So as I said here, I've got a hair rigged hook here. This is a size four uh, laser sharp uh, needlepoint octopus hook. And um, there's all sorts of different kind of hooks. Feel free to use whatever hook that you like. Take your pick. I like the octopus hook. Most uh, carp fishermen seem to have their mind boggled when they see I'm using an octopus hook. Um, that's because they don't really understand how octopus hooks work. That's going to be a separate video. Stay tuned for that. But like I said, this is a hair rigged hook. I tie these myself. I have a video specifically about how I do just this component here. Uh, if you want to check that out, that'll be in the description as well. But regardless of what style or brand or size hook you use, the most important factor is that it's sharp. Super sharp. I would look for uh, brands of hooks that advertise as chemically sharpened. Uh, chemically sharpened is going to get a sharper point than is achievable with mechanical sharpening. It just is. If you look at them under a microscope, chemically sharpened one is much sharper than mechanically sharpened hook. So like I said, sharpness is important and you need to change them out uh, frequently enough. If, the, if this gets uh, dinged up on a rock or something and you don't have a sharp hook anymore, you need to fix that. Either sharpen it or change it out. I don't sharpen hooks, uh, I just replace it when, it, when, it, when a hook gets dulled. So this line that I've uh, made the hair rake hook with is a 30 pound braid. This is spider wire easy braid. I like this easy braid because as advertised it is easier to work with uh, than uh, standard braid. It's kind of slick, it's got a little bit of a coating on it, and uh, but it works good for this purpose. And like I said, this is 30 pound braid. And this 30 pound braid goes up in just a short, short little two inch leader. And that length of this leader is important in this rig because I want this hook and the hook bait to be as close as possible to this feeder, which is going to be covered with pack bait, and uh, I don't tuck my hook bait into the uh, into the pack bait like a lot of people do. I like to have it um, dangling uh, so that basically when it's laying in the water, I've got a pile of pack bait right here, and I've got my my hook and my hook bait laying right next to it, within two inches. If a carp is going to find this, they're going to find this too. Don't worry about that; they'll find it. So I, I just like the 100% assurance that my hook is not buried underneath the sinker in some way, shape, or form. 
if you tuck your bait in there, there's always the chance that, that might, it might have landed upside down or you know, there's always a chance that your hook might be covered up. And if your hook's covered up, you're not gonna catch a fish. So that's why, that's why I like to leave the, uh, the hook dangling separate from the feeder. And then of course, like I said, the, the two inch short, short leader is uh, important to keep that hook bait really close to the pack bait. So coming up from the leader here, this is a size 10 barrel swivel. Uh, you could probably get away with using a smaller swivel. Uh, I just use, I like a size 10 because it's pretty small, but it's still large enough where I can, uh, you know, thread the line through uh, with my fingers without having to use any special tools or anything like that. Uh, once you get smaller than this, it gets difficult for me to use when they're, when they're smaller than this. So this is the, I like the size 10. And this is, the swivel serves as the link from this hook link to the main line. Let me slide this sinker up a little bit here. This is the main line right here. This is 20 pound monofilament is uh, my preferred uh, main line. And the main line is connected to this end of the swivel with a uh, seven twist clinch knot. That's the knot that I like to use. Use whatever knot you're comfortable making. My opinion is the best knot is the one that you're good at tying. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what knot you use. And the reason I like to use 20 pound mono instead of a lighter line, I know a lot of people like to use lighter line, uh, I get into, I fish some snaggy stuff a lot of the time. And I get fish swimming into snags and uh, that, that extra bulk on this line really helps when this line is rubbing up on rocks or, or br branches and things and gets scuffed up really bad during a fight. Uh, I've noticed that uh, 10 or 15 pound line will snap much more quickly and this just saves me a lot of break offs. It just does. Maybe you don't need it in the places you fish, but I like the 20 pound mono. So then going up the line, I've got a little black bead here. I don't know what size this bead is. I'm thinking it's a three millimeter bead. I'm not sure. But the point of this bead is to protect that knot right there from uh, the lead. I don't want the lead banging on that knot. I got these beads at the craft store and uh, these aren't fishing specific beads or anything, just plastic beads. But I found ones that have a big enough hole in the center so that the, they will slide right over top of that knot as you can see. The knot goes up inside the cavity of the bead and just keeps that knot protected uh, and I like that feature a lot. And going up the line here then above that bead is the feeder sinker. Uh, I make these myself. Uh, I used to use the coil type feeders and that also works really good. Um, but I kind of simplified it down a little bit more. I used to use a coil and then above that would be just like an egg sinker. And that worked great. The, 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 I'm sure there's lots of you that are still using that rig and that's great. I, I, it's a great rig. But I wanted to simplify it even more. So I've got uh, the, the sinker and the coil combined into a basically a sinker shaped like a coil. Works great for me. This is a custom made item. Like I said, I make these. You can buy some. I do have a limited quantity for sale. Uh, links are in the description. But there's a multitude of different uh, kinds of uh, inline sliding feeders that you can find online. Um, I just like these because they're just all, they're all metal. There's no plastic parts to break. Uh, with the spring feeders, I was uh, pretty much constantly replenishing and replacing those because the, they had little plastic straws that went through the middle and they just break all the time. Not a big deal. They're cheap, but this is what I'm using these days. And then above the feeder, I've got uh, another one of those bees, exact same as the one uh, below it here. And then above that bead is a rubber bobber stop. These rubber bobber stops uh, have a, a good grip on the line. They can slide, but with, with it requires some force to push them up the line. And uh, that bead is there just because that bobber stop is small enough that it would go inside uh, the, the lumen of the uh, sinker if I didn't have that bead there. So that bead there is just as a, is a larger piece to butt up against the uh, bobber stop. And like I said, that bobber stop, that, that, that keeps this feeder from sliding up the main line when, uh, when a fish pulls on the hook. And that, that's what creates that bolt effect. That's what sets the hook for you. Just like that. And as far as the size of the feeder, uh, this is, I think, is a three ounce feeder. I make them in two ounce and three ounce. And uh, you can get away with one ounce too. You just, you need enough weight uh, that's gonna be able to drive that hook into the fish's mouth. And like I, like I mentioned before also, you know, the super sharp hook is critical. So you can, you can get away with one ounce for sure, but I prefer two or three uh, to get a good uh, bolt effect 
uh, with this rig. Now the reasoning of having a bobber stop here instead of like a swivel or some uh, sort of attachment where the sinker is or the feeder is fixed in this spot here uh, is regarding fish ethics really. See if this sinker is fixed in place either by a swivel or some other thing up here in, above it uh, preventing it from sliding at all what could happen is if you get a fish on the line and uh, for some reason or another you get broken off here up above uh, your rig what you've got is a fish swimming around with this whole thing dangling from their mouth and uh, the, the carp feed on the bottom right so th this this fish is going to go down to the bottom and start trying to feed again eventually and good chance that this sinker is going to get caught either between some rocks or on a stick or something it's going to get caught on something and then what you've got is a fish that it's basically tethered to the bottom or to a log or something it's hooked in the mouth and then this thing the sinker is stuck it can't move but uh, if we have a sliding uh, sinker like but like I do here that under some force it can slide if that situation occurs the carp starts if the carp gets tethered it can start pulling on this and what will happen is that sinker will slide up and off of the main line and uh, therefore just leaving only this dangling and uh, eventually this hook will work its way out but it, it basically gets rid of the possibility uh, or just mitigates the possibility a little bit of the carp uh, getting tethered to the bottom uh, in the event of a break off. I know they make feeders that have just loops on both ends that you just tie your hook link to this end and tie your main line to this end and those are fixed and uh, that, 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 that'll create the exact scenario that I'm talking about. So that's why I do it this way. Uh, just trying to be an ethical fisherman, think about the fish a little bit. Uh, I, don't, I don't like the idea of having uh, a fish tethered to the bottom to, to die like that. So, uh, you know, just a, just a little bit of adjustment to the rig. Not a big deal to prevent that from happening. So now I'm just going to go ahead and then uh, build one of these rigs uh, step by step. So for those of you who are uh, new to carp fishing or new to this, these kinds of rigs, uh, here's, a, here's a little tutorial for you. Starting off with the bobber stops. They usually come in packs like this. This is just a little plastic tab to hold on to. And uh, as you can see there are uh, like six bobber stops on here and they all, they're, all on a little, they're on a little wire just like that. See the little loop at the end? What I'm going to do is uh, separate one from the rest of them, so I just have one all by itself out here. I'm going to take my main line, this is my 20 pound mono, and I'm going to push it through the end of that, that loop on the bobber stop there, and then fold the line over so I've got that. And it helps to just kind of make a little, kind of squeeze that line, make a little bend in that line, so that's what you've got right there. I'm going to take that bobber stop and push it down towards the line there onto the line. It's going to grab the bobber stop. I'm going to pull with this hand and pull the bobber stop in the opposite way with the other hand. There we go. It's on the line now. So now that bobber stop is on the main line. I'm going to go ahead and slide that up the main line a couple feet and get that out of the way. Next thing to go on the line is one of those little black beads going to go on the main line right after the bobber stop onto the line it goes and slide it up now the feeder sinker I like to put uh, as you can see that the ends look slightly different this end is slightly larger than this end and I like to put this end toward the hook that way there's just a, a little bit more weight on the end nearest the hook and kind of improve that bolt effect a little bit how much difference that makes not sure might not make any difference but that's the way I like to do it and I'm going to take my main line and just thread it through the lumen of that sinker and slide that up the line. Next is the second bead. Same deal. It goes on the main line. Slide it up. So here's what we've got so far. Bobber stop, bead, feeder, bead. Only one more step and that's the hook link. I keep my hook links uh, pre-tied. I make these at home ahead of time and I keep them just wrapped up on this little piece of foam. Uh, I do have these for sale if, if anybody wants to buy them, but they're really easy to tie up yourself. Like I said, I have a tutorial video on exactly how I make these. Yeah, it's just the, 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 just the hair rigged hook, that short leader, and the swivel. And that main line just goes right onto the swivel. 
And like I said, I'm going to tie a seven twist clinch knot on here, but uh, tie whatever uh, knot you're comfortable with. Just trim that tag in, and I like to leave a little tag on there. Just helps to, just in case the knot slips a little bit. It usually doesn't, but I like to leave a little tag. And then all that's left to do is slide the sinker and the beads down up against that swivel like that. And that's the rig. It's ready to fish. I'm going to show you how I apply some bait here on the, on the hair rig. So in carp fishing, you're going to see people using something called a baiting needle. And uh, I don't use baiting needles. I just don't really see a need for it when I have a whole bunch of jig heads sitting around. And this is just a quarter ounce jig head that I, I've straightened the hook. But I, I make sure I didn't uh, squash down the barb. And I'm going to use this for my baiting needle. Works really good. It's nice and sharp. Pokes right through the bait easily. It's got this nice little handle here to hang on to. Obviously you can use whatever bait you want, but uh, I'm going to put on some kernels of corn here. And the number of pieces that I put on the corn is going to kind of vary depending on what size hook I'm using and uh, how long uh, I've made the hair on my hair rig here. I really want to try and kind of match the size, total size of the of the hook bait with the um, size of the hook. But that looks pretty good to me. Three kernels looks like it's going to fit on that hair real nicely and uh, it's going to be slightly larger than the hook. I like the bait to be slightly larger than the hook so that when they suck it up they'll feel the bait and uh, maybe feel the hook less than the bait. But anyway, so to get these kernels of corn onto this hair I'm just going to push the tip of this baiting needle through that loop. Maybe I didn't show that before, but this, this hair is not actually a single piece, it's a, it's a loop. So I'm going to put that baiting needle through the loop, and then I'm going to catch the line on the, the barb on the, on the baiting needle there. And this is a little bit like how we put the bobber stop on the line. Once we've got this um, baiting needle kind of hooked onto the, onto the hair rig there, I'm just going to push these kernels of corn up onto the hair just like that. Then I'll remove the baiting needle. So as you can see here we've got our kernel, kernels of corn on the hair but we need to put something down here through this loop of line to prevent those kernels of corn from sliding off. And that's what that's called a bait stop. And these are the the bait stops that are most common with carp fishing. They're they're little pieces of plastic and they're they're perforated uh, in between each little piece kind of like a little tiny barbell and that that goes it through that loop there and that uh, prevents your bait from sliding off I don't use these um, it's just not my preference I don't really like leaving little bits of plastic in the water wherever I go I know they're tiny uh, and they probably don't make a difference you're not you're not necessarily wrong if you use these things but what I use is little pieces of twig Right here in my tackle box I keep, in the corner of my tackle box, I keep a bunch of little bait stops that I've, I've made out of twigs. I keep a little uh, container also, uh, just extra ones, but they're just little pieces of twig that, you know, I just, I just pre-make these when, uh, while I'm waiting for a bite. I'll just pick up little pieces of twig and just, you know, cut them into little, uh, you know, quarter inch uh, sections um, with the scissors, and they work great. I'm going to take my little piece of twig and uh, stick it through the loop in the end of the hair rig just like that and then push those kernels of corn or hook, whatever my hook bait is down up against uh, that little twig and that's it those, those kernels are not coming off and uh, you're ready to fish once you've got your hook bait secured, then uh, it's only a matter of just putting some pack bait on the feeder here. You know, and just pack them around. I've got uh, all sorts of recipes of pack bait. Check it again. Check down in the description. You can find out uh, how to make some pack bait for this. But that's the rig. You've got a bunch of pack bait here. Got your hook bait here, and uh, yeah, a carp will come along. They'll see that big pile of, of stuff there, and they'll start just uh, chowing away. And eventually, they'll get this in their mouth, and then you got a fight on your hands. But that's my updated 99% rig. I hope you found that useful. You got questions, comments, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.